next talk, uh, Tony Panther, uh, uh, model that creates a flat connection on smooth varieties. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's uh, uh, great fun to be fishing. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to tell you a story about. Uh, uh, so it's it's a it's a recap of uh, some joint works I did with Bertrand Toen, and um, it it's about the geometry uh, uh, of the moduli of flat connections or of uh, locally constant shifts on smooth varieties of arbitrary dimension, and they're going to be over. You can think about over the complex numbers, but in general over uh, 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 a field with uh, any field of characteristic zero. Uh, and uh, what I want to focus on, I want to focus on, on how one can construct and understand postponed structures on these guys, on these moduli spaces, and how one can uh, uh, describe their symplectic leaves. And it's, uh, it's a lot of stuff, uh, and I have no fears. You should fear. Uh, uh, so... Uh, I'll stop, but uh, uh, when I have to. <clears throat> so yeah, I'll necessarily have to skip some of it, but uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so here is the motivation. Um, uh, if you have a compact oriented topological surface and say a reductive complex group, then there is a classical story uh, that uh, in, 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 in various, uh, various aspects of it uh, and various uh, uh, Arguments were given by many, many people. So I, I wrote some of the people, but there are mo many more uh, that explain that if you uh, look at, is there a pointer here? Oh, it doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> if you look at the moduli space of representations of the fundamental group of the surface in G, uh, then uh, once you are uh, 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 in some good geometric situation, or once you focus on the smooth part of the moduli space, then it carries a natural algebraic Poisson structure. I mean, moreover, uh, uh, the symplectic glyphs of, uh, of uh, that Poisson structure, you can describe them as moduli spaces in their own right, and they're just moduli spaces of representations that have fixed um, local monodrome is at infinity uh, on your surface. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yes. Just to clarify, uh, 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 the surface is compact. No. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's compact, it's actually symplectic. But yeah, uh, 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 it's compact, but it could have boundaries. Yeah. So this has a puncture, maybe? Uh, yeah, so you could uh, uh, you could either talk about uh, uh, surfaces with boundaries, or you could talk about surfaces with punctures. Uh, let's say that I'm talking about non-compact surfaces, uh, 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 and in fact, non-compact surfaces which are complements of finite many points in a compact one. Okay. Uh, and then we have a Poisson structure. Okay, thanks. And uh, I want to extend these statements to higher-dimensional smooth varieties. Um, not necessarily compact. So I, I'm going to state the theorems, and then uh, maybe most of the words won't make any sense. And then I'll go into into what uh, what the words really mean. Uh, I, I want to take care of making the statements so that I don't run out of time at the end. Uh, so um, so here is uh, uh, here is the the main theorem. Uh, um, so this is in the the uh, case of Betty moduli spaces. So if you have a d-dimensional smooth complex algebraic variety, and you have a reductive group over your field that you're dealing with, you can look at the derived moduli stack of G local systems on X. So these are locally constant principal G bundles on X. Uh, so the only assumption here is that X is smooth. Um, and then the claim is that it has a natural Poisson structure. It's shifted, uh, 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 the shift depends on the dimension, and it's 2 minus 2d. Uh, so in the case of a surface, you get just a Poisson structure. Um, 
And this is unconditional. Uh, uh, it has no qualifications of what kind of local systems you're taking or no qualifications of what, uh, um, uh, 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 what part of the moduli you're taking. This is on the whole moduli. But it is the moduli, the derived moduli stack. So that's, uh, that's what saves the day, that what solves singularities, uh, resolves singularities and allows you to talk about these Poisson structures. So that's the, 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 the first statement. And the second statement is that this shifted Poisson structure has generalized symplectic leaves. There are many ways to construct them, uh, uh, but among all possible ways to construct them, there is one that mimics what happens in the case of surfaces and it produces interesting results. Uh, and uh, what, what it, it says is it says that if you look at geolocal systems with appropriately fixed uh, 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 local monodromies at infinity, and I'll explain what that means, then you get symplectic leaves. So this is, this is the, the statement uh, in the Betty case, and it's completely parallel to the statement for surfaces. Uh, and uh, Betty means that I'm looking at locally constant uh, uh, shifts uh, because so there are two parallel stories that I'm describing. One is about locally constant principal bundles. The other is about principal algebraic bundles with flat connections, which will be the Durham case. And they're related by Riemann-Hilbert correspondence. But in fact, how the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence interacts with this, uh, uh, with this uh, Poisson structures is not quite clear. So we really have to do the proofs in both cases separately. Um, Okay, so some comments about this, this uh, locally constant Betty story is that in case D equals one, this specializes to the government at all Poisson structure on the moduli of representations. Uh, and in fact, the, 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 the proof of one is not much more difficult than the proof for surfaces. Um, it's, it's essentially the same argument once you understand it correctly. The proof of two, and in fact, the statement of two is actually delicate. Um, the, the singling out symplectic leaves, understanding what the symplectic leaves are uh, on these locally constant guys, uh, turns out to be quite tricky in higher dimensions. Uh, and uh, there are various uh, uh, issues that you have to deal with uh, that, are, that are really delicate. One is that uh, this condition that fixes the local monodromies at infinity in order to separate a symplectic leaf, uh, it's not visible on the level of moduli spaces. Uh, if you look at the underlying underived moduli spaces, the condition is just vacuous. Uh, and you cannot even state it. Um, so you really need to work with the derived stack. Uh, and, and, and the condition on the derived stack actually involves some non-trivial homotopy theoretic data. Uh, and also, it turns out that in higher dimensions, when the boundary uh, uh, divisor at infinity is not smooth, when it has extra components, uh, many components intersecting, there is a non-trivial condition on the local monodromies at infinity. It's not just enough to fix conjugacy classes of uh, monodromies around each component. There is a condition on those conjugacy classes that would guarantee and in fact, it's necessary and sufficient for these conjugacy classes to give you a symplectic leaf. Uh, uh, so we call this condition strictness, and hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll show you what it is. Yes. Should I wait for the microphone? Or... Yes. Thank you. Uh, so with respect to the uh, part one, mm -hmm. uh, so for Riemann surfaces, it just depends on the underlying real manifold or even topological yeah. manifold. Is there any echo of that in yeah, yeah. It, it, it only depends on the underlying oriented topological manifold in or higher dimensions. Space or... Well, uh, uh, for, uh, yeah, so, so <clears throat> if you want to do it on, 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 uh, on, oriented spaces in some sense, places that have very dear duality, you, you can do it, but but it's more delicate. And I'm not going to talk about that. I actually talked about that in, in Northwestern. Uh, uh, 
All right. Uh, so here is the DRAM story, uh, the one about the flat connections. Uh, as I said, it's parallel, uh, uh, but you see the results are slightly different and, and have a different uh, difficult difficulty built in. So now I'm dealing with a d-dimensional smooth algebraic variety over the field K. Uh, again, not, not compact necessarily. And I look at the moduli, the right moduli stack of bundles with flat connections, algebraic bundles with flat connections on X. And again, it has a natural two minus two D shifted symplectic structure. Uh, then if you want to understand, uh, 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 sorry, Poisson structure. Um, if you want to understand how that Poisson structure is constructed, uh, well, it's it's constructed. I mean, I'll, I'll show the construction. But uh, pa Pavel mentioned that yesterday that uh, uh, there is a mechanism and, in fact, an equivalence, uh, uh, a conjectural equivalence between Poisson me mechanism for constructing Poisson structures and uh, by using Lagrangian structures in symplectic guys, which are shifted by one degree higher, uh, um, and uh, that's how you construct the structure here. And, and in the Betty case. Uh, uh, so in order to do that, you need to be able to talk about bundles with flat connections uh, on a punctured formal neighborhood of the boundary, which is a complicated technical thing. In fact, it doesn't actually exist. Uh, uh, but there is some substitute for it in non-commutative geometry. So it turns out that there is a formal boundary of this space, uh, and there is a well-defined uh, 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 category uh, 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 of shifts on that formal boundary, even though geometrically it doesn't really make sense. And you can solve a moduli problem in that category of shifts, shifts with connections. Um, and, uh, uh, and then there is a restriction map from vector bundles with flat connections on X to vector bundles with flat connections on the formal boundary. And uh, the vector bundles with flat connections on the formal boundary are symplectic, and this map is Lagrangian, and that's how you get the Poisson structure. Uh, and uh, one part that uh, we couldn't quite prove, uh, 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 and it's it's really a, a, a technical um, uh, a, a technical uh, obstacle in this in this setting, is that we can't quite prove that the fiber of this map uh, uh, is uh, or a given so so fix so this will be typically uh, uh, the analog of the symplectic leaves, uh, the fibers of this map. So uh, um, uh, uh, you would want to say uh, so fix fix some flat bundle at the boundary, and you you, you look at the fiber. You would want to say that it's uh, um, uh, uh, it's a derived algebraic space, uh, 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 um, uh, a locally finite presentation. Uh, we can't quite say that. I actually said it, but uh, it should say quasi. Uh, so it's a derived quasi algebraic space, locally finite presentation. Uh, um, and uh, um, uh, so that's uh, that, that quasi thing is, uh, uh, is a bit of an annoyance. But in any, of course, specific example, you can check that it is the derived algebraic space of locally finite presentation. So uh, um, this is just a, somehow the, the general theory is missing some kind of uh, index theorem uh, 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 that would guarantee these uh, these guys being uh, nice uh, algebraic guys. Okay, so these are the theorems, and as I said, maybe you you don't. Uh, um, uh, yeah, so so I, I already made some of those comments. Uh, um, so this formal boundary encodes the, the, the shift theory on a, I mean, the, the demodule theory on a punctured formal neighborhood, which actually does not exist geometrically. It does exist in Archimedean geometry. So there have been uh, rigid analytic and non commutative models for this guy in rigid analytic geometry that were uh, described by Ben Basat and Tiamkin and the Fimov and uh, Henny and Porter and Vesozzi. Uh, and you can use those models to actually. So this is these are models for the shift theory for the quasi coherent shifts on on this uh, punctured formal neighborhood infinity. And you can um, you can bootstrap this to get it for deep modules, which is what we do. Um, 
and um, uh, yeah, so so the 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 the, the main the main difficulty in this work is to construct this uh, stack of perfect complexes with connections on the formal boundary. And um, uh, so we, we model the argument. So this is, this is a problem that was actually solved uh, uh, in a rather uh, 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 amazing technical way by Sam Raskin for, for the affine line. And we're just modeling the argument on his, uh, uh, on his reasoning and it works. Uh, and then, uh, and then the problem is that, as I said, these stacks are actually not algebraic. Uh, um, they're representable formally at field value points, uh, uh, and that's enough for, uh, for us to be able to define uh, the derived structure, the symplectic structures, the Lagrangian and Poisson structures, and, and construct them. Uh, but there is no real geometricity. There is no real way to, to reduce them to spaces and equivalency relations on those spaces and stuff like that, except that on the fibers, you can almost do it. So you have a dominant atlas rather than an atlas. Um, 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 uh, but at the end, you know, the existence of these Lagrangian structures, they always boil down to some kind of uh, either Poincaré or Verdier duality or Lefschetz duality uh, for spaces with boundaries. Okay, so now to the uh, uh, to the meat of the story. I'm going to talk about the locally constant case. I'm probably going to skip entirely the Deram case uh, because there won't be any time. And I want to show you that strictness condition, which which is interesting, and we haven't seen it anywhere else um, uh, uh, um, appearing naturally in in, in Poisson geometry. So. Start with a finite CW complex and a fine reductive group. So we want to study the moduli stack uh, of uh, log G of X, which parameterizes locally constant principle G bundles on X. Um, and uh, so I'm calling those geolocal systems. Um, so there is a construction of that guy. Uh, um, the uh, it is an algebraic derived stack over the field over which the group is defined. It's truncation. Uh, it's underlying uh, um, uh, stack which ignores the derived structure, ignores this higher homological neopotence in the function theory. Um, it is just an ordinary stack. It's algebraic, and it is the moduli stack of representations of the fundamental group. So you just take the uh, 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 representation scheme of the fundamental group based at the point, mod by, by the group acting by conjugation, uh, um, and, uh, uh, and you get a stack. So this is this the underlying stack of this stack of local systems. So that one only depends on the fundamental group, or if you want, only on the uh, on the first level of the Posnikov tower of X. Whereas the stack of local system depends on the full homotopy type. Uh, so the the derived structure on the stack of local system actually remembers uh, all the complexity of the homotopy type. Um, so this 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 underlying stack, uh, which is the the, the stack of, of representations of the fundamental group, it has a coarse moduli space, uh, which is a K variety, affine K variety. It is the JIT quotient of the stack of representations by the conjugation action. So it parameterizes conjugacy classes of representations with uh, reductive monodromy, representations whose such that the closures of the image of the representation, the risky closure of the image of the representation is reductive. Um, and uh, 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 and uh, it really is something that's very classically studied in topology, uh, but it doesn't know anything about the higher cells in your CW complex, whereas the derived structure does. And I'm not going to talk about the, the construction. Uh, so just believe me, it exists. It's algebraic. It's as nice as it can get. Um, OK. And it's it's actually locally a finite presentation, which in this world of derived stacks is the analog of smoothness. So it just means that uh, 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 it has a well-defined 
tangent complex, and that tangent complex is locally a finite complex of finite rank vector bundles. <clears throat> and if you have one of these Artin stacks, which are locally a finite presentations, you can define a complex of close two forms. So, for instance, you know, if you go to an atlas, which is given by a non-positively graded differential graded commutative differential graded algebra A, so it's something affine corresponds to a, a, a non-positively graded commutative differential graded algebra, then the, the complex of close two forms is just uh, 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 the complex given by the pit step of the Hodge filtration in the Deram complex of A, uh, shifted by P, and uh, uh, it needs to be uh, totalized. You know, it's a, it's a double complex now. The Deram complex is a double complex because the cotangent complex itself is a complex and uh, you need to pass to a total complex but complete it with respect to the product rather than the direct sum but that's what the the, the closed two forms are in this case and an n cycle in that complex of closed two forms is an n shifted two form and uh, an n shifted symplectic form is such an n cycle uh, such that if you look at the underlying two form, just at the section in the second exterior power of the cotangent complex and contract with it, it gives you an equivalence uh, between the tangent and the cotangent complex. And if it's unshifted, that equivalence is, you know, it, it has to be, I, I, I forgot the shift, there has to be a shift by n here uh, uh, because it is unshifted, it's a degree n cos cycle. So it's a quasi isomorphism between the tangent complex and the unshifted cotangent complex. There's a misprint on the last line that closed should not be there. You've got A2C, it just meant A2. Yes, sorry. Yeah, this is the guy without the clues. I mean, this is just the 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 the, the zeroth level of, of of the guy in the double complex. Okay, and uh, the relative structures like that. Uh, uh, if you have a morphism between derived art and stacks, so this was mentioned yesterday, Pavel's talk. Um, you can talk about isotropic structures, so those are on, on maps like that. So those are pairs uh, when you have a symplectic structure on the target and a homotopy between the pullback of that symplectic structure and zero uh, on the source. And isotropic structure is Lagrangian if uh, uh, when you contract with the homotopy, the induced map between the relative tangent complex and the cotangent complex uh, uh, of, of the source shifted by n minus one is an isomorphism. And uh, one amazing thing about this, uh, uh, this uh, shifted story uh, uh, is that it introduces a lot of flexibility, in particular, it blurs completely uh, the the distinction between symplectic and Lagrangian structures. So you can build the whole theory only with something called Lagrangian structures without mentioning symplectic structures at all uh, and extract the symplectic structures as a corollary, or you could do like symplectic structures and then compatible structures, which are the Lagrangians. But in particular, an N minus one shifted Lagrangian structure on a map to a point is just an N minus one shifted symplectic structure on the target, on the source. So they, they're really indistinguishable, uh, uh, morally indistinguishable in this, uh, in this world. Um, okay, but so what do we do on this moduli of, of uh, local systems? So if you have a compact oriented topological manifold uh, with boundary uh, of dimension D and a reductive group, if the boundary is empty, then the derived stack of local systems has a two minus D shifted symplectic structure, which is canonical up to the choice of a non-degenerate element, uh, uh, non-degenerate killing form on G. So once you choose an orientation on the source and a non-degenerate uh, killing form on the group, you get a two minus, one sh two minus D shifted symplectic structure on the stack of local systems. So that's uh, something we proved a long time ago uh, uh, in some bigger generality. I mean, the mapping stack from anything orientable to anything symplectic is symplectic with the shift 
which is the shift of the symplectic structure on the target minus the dimension of the orientation. So in this case, the claim is that BG, the classifying stack of the group, is too shifted symplectic. So the, the, the stack of local systems is two minus D shifted symplectic. And then there is a relative version of that that was proved by Damian Kolak, which says that if you look at the restriction map, uh, uh, so, so if you have now a manifold with boundary, the boundary doesn't have a boundary, right? So the boundary is a manifold without boundary. So the stack of local systems on the boundary by the first part is symplectic. It's three minus D shifts at symplectic because the dimension is D minus one. And if you look at the restriction map from local systems on, on the manifold, uh, restricting to local systems on the boundary, this carries a two minus D shifted Lagrangian structure for the three minus D shifted symplectic structure on the boundary. So these are, um, these are the, um, uh, 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 the, the basic existence theorems. And um, when you have a Riemann surface with boundary, this reconstructs the uh, symplectic structures on the modular of geo-local systems with prescribed monodromies at infinity, which normally you construct by quasi-Hamiltonian reduction. And in fact, this whole story has a generalization which uh, um, uh, for which the quasi-Hamiltonian reduction, general quasi-Hamiltonian reduction is a special case, and this thing is a special case. Um, so, uh, so let me talk about the, the, the basic example. So suppose you have an oriented surface with boundary. Uh, the boundary is a disjoint union of circles. Local systems on the boundary are just classified by uh, the stack G mod G, uh, um, where you're quotioning the group G by its conjugation action on itself, one copy of G mod G for each boundary circle. Um, and if you look at the circle, at a single circle, the stack of local systems on the circle, which is G mod G, it carries a natural one shifted symplectic structure. <clears throat> and um, the, the, if you have any lambda uh, uh, element in G, the inclusion of the conjugacy class of lambda into G actually gives you a Lagrangian structure on the map uh, uh, from the conjugacy class modded by G. So this is just the classifying stack of the stabilizer of the conjugacy class to G mod G. So this gives you some natural Lagrangians in this one shifted symplectic stacks that are the local systems G local systems on a circle. They're just given by conjugacy classes in the group. And there is one other Lagrangian, which is local systems by Kalax theorem. There is one other Lagrangian, which is local systems on uh, uh, G local systems on the interior of the surface. And so you can intersect that Lagrangian with this natural Lagrangian that's coming from the boundary from the conjugacy classes. Uh, so you have the product of these classifying stacks of the stabilizers of the conjugacy classes. You have the local systems on the interior mapping to the local systems on the boundary, which is symplectic. And this fiber product, which is a Lagrangian intersection, gives you a uh, 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 shifted symplectic structure. So that's another theorem we proved that the intersection of two Lagrangians in an n-shifted symplectic guy is n minus one shifted symplectic. So this is a one-shifted symplectic guy, the one coming from the boundary. It has two Lagrangians, so you get a zero-shifted symplectic uh, uh, space, which is this derived stack of G local systems on X with uh, uh, um, uh, 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 with the property that uh, the the monodromies around infinity are in the given conjugacy class. So that's that's the way to reconstruct this uh, this standard uh, uh, symplectic leaf uh, guy. And um, for the Poisson structures, uh, you just need to okay. So I think this is not going to make any sense. Uh, this is just the definition of a Poisson structure, but I'm not going to go through it. Uh, 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 but there is a uh, um, there is a, um, uh, a, a theorem which says that 
shifted Lagrangian structures give you shifted Poisson structures. And uh, uh, there is actually a partial converse to this theorem uh, 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 when you formalize the notion. We, we look at formal shifted Poisson structures, uh, which was proven by Costello and Rosenblum. Uh, and uh, so the theorem was, Pavel mentioned it yesterday, it's the theorem of Melanie and Sofronov. But basically what it says is it says that shifted Lagrangian structures are the same as shifted Poisson structures on the source. Or at least, I mean, Melanie Sofronov theorem, which is the, the one we are using, is the one that says that if you have a shifted Lagrangian structure, then you get the shifted Poisson structure. And I'm, so in particular for a compact oriented surface, uh, uh, or for compact oriented d dimensional manifold with boundary, the restriction map is Lagrangian by Kallax argument. And so it gives you a two minus D shifted simple like a Poisson structure. And now the question is, how do we understand the symplectic cliffs in this guy? Um, so, you know, classically, if you have a Poisson structure on a smooth manifold or on a smooth algebraic variety, it gives you a foliation of the variety but by symplectic leaves. For uh, in this derived stacky world, you have many more symplectic leaves than leaves in a foliation. So we call them leaves, but they're not leaves in anything. Uh, because remember the notion of something being, uh, 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 say, having a relative structure, being isotropic or Lagrangian, it was specified not on a sub derived stack, but on something that just maps to your derived stack. And it can map with non-trivial fibers and it can still be isotropic or Lagrangian. And in the same case, uh, in the same case, you can have a symplectic derived stack that maps to a Poisson stack so that the pullback of the Poisson structure is the Poisson structure on the source. And the map can have non-trivial fibers. So you get many more symplectic leaves, which are not necessarily embedded in your derived stack. Um, so a generalized symplectic leaf, uh, uh, we are going to say, is defined to be uh, 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 so. So you know, a Poisson structure, as I said, is coming from a Lagrangian structure on uh, on a map from F to something symplectic, and a generalized symplectic leaf of that Poisson structure is going to be defined as being a Lagrangian intersection of F prime of F with some other Lagrangian. And as I said, there can be many, many different Lagrangians. They're not necessarily subs. Um, and so a uh, generalized symplectic leaf by, by construction carries a canonical and shifted symplectic structure compatible with the Poisson structure. Um, and we want to understand those. And so, um, uh, for a compact oriented surface with boundary, the, the restriction map has a zero shifted Lagrangian structure and so corresponds to a, a zero shifted Poisson structure. This derived moduli stack of, of local systems with prescribed local monodromy at infinity is the generalized symplectic leaf because we got it by intersecting with another Lagrangian coming from the Lagrangians in the G mod G guys. Uh, but there are other symplectic leaves, actually, I don't know, uh, I didn't mention here, but there are many other that you can write, uh, because if you take any three manifold that bounds your surface, uh, uh, the local systems on that three manifold mapping to the local systems on the surface will be a Lagrangian, again, and you can intersect with it, and that will give you another symplectic leaf. And th that persists in higher dimensions as well. Uh, any, if you take the formal boundary or a, a, or a topological boundary uh, uh, of your, uh, your non-compact guy, anything that bounds that boundary will give you symplectically in the Poisson structure of the module of local systems. Okay. But uh, uh, how do we understand the symplectic leaves in higher dimensions? So if you have a, a topological space Y, the, you can talk about its boundary. Uh, uh, its boundary is a priori, not a topological space, but just a homotopy type. Uh, in fact, a pro-homotopy type. It's a limit of homotopy types. And the way you define it is, you erase compacts from your Y and look at the limit of the homotopy types of the complements of compacts. So it's a, it's a pro-simplicial set, pro-homotopy pro type. 
but uh, um, I mean, this limit really makes sense in the infinity category of homotopy types. Um, and this pro object is in general not constant. I mean, it's literally a pro object. It's a limit of things that are not constant, that, that, that don't eventually stabilize. It could, can be very complicated. But if you take X to be the underlying topological space of a smooth algebraic variety over the complex numbers and dimensional one, then it is a constant object. And it is a constant pro object, constant homotopy type, and it is the homotopy type of a 2n dimensional topological manifold, 2n minus 1 dimensional topological manifold. Uh, so what you really need to do is take a, so, so you can prove, you can actually describe that manifold, you can take a good compactification of z, so compactify z to something smooth, so that the boundary is a strict normal crossing divisor, uh, and then take the real oriented blow-up of the compactified guy along uh, uh, along that strict normal crossing divisor, uh, and you, you you get a manifold with boundary. The boundary of that manifold is this homotopy type, so it doesn't depend on the good compactification, which is a kind of a, I mean it's a it's a, a small uh, 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 a small miracle. Uh, uh, I mean it's not a very surprising statement, but it's it's really great uh, in its utility. And I just want to point out, uh, 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 addressing a little bit Ezra's question of what happens when when we're not dealing with manifolds, but say with general, uh, I don't know, Poincare duality spaces, um, that if you do this, what, what I said, you know, compactify with something with normal crossings, take, take the reoriented law, take the boundary, you get a well-defined C infinity manifold. Uh, in fact, you get a well-defined, sorry, not C infinity, you get a well-defined C infinity manifold with corners. Uh, so you get a stratified manifold. Uh, the stratified structure does depend on the compactification, uh, but the topological manifold structure does not. And uh, uh, so if you want to do more complicated things, you really need to pay attention to, to I mean, this homotopy type, the pro-homotopy type could be non-constant uh, and, and, and you need to pay attention to it. <clears throat> okay, but so if you have a smooth algebraic variety, uh, um, then uh, the claim is that uh, this restriction map to, to the, uh, uh, to, to the homotopy type boundary to this uh, uh, topological manifold uh, is, uh, 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 is a well-defined map of uh, derived art in stacks of locally affinity presentation. It is equipped with 2-2n two, two two shifted Lagrangian structure. Uh, 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 once you set up the orientations, it all just follows from Kalak theorem. Uh, uh, any particular, it can be viewed as a 2-2n two two shifted Poisson structures personal structure on the stack of local systems on X. Now, how do we separate symplectic leaves? Let's look at the simplest case where we can actually find a compactification of Z where the boundary is a smooth device, maybe disconnected, but smooth. It has maybe several components, but each component is smooth and doesn't meet anything else. Then this, uh, 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 this ideal boundary that I was talking about, uh, the, 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 the constant uh, uh, pro-homotopy type boundary, in this case, it's just the manifold, which is the boundary of a circle bundle around each of those divisors. Uh, sorry, a disk bundle around each of those divisors. So it's a circle bundle on the divisor. It's the circle bundle which is uh, 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 classified by the first chain class of the normal bundle of the divisor. And if you take now uh, uh, an element in the group G with a given centralizer, so you need to, to do this construction about uh, the local monodromy set infinity, but the construction is now naturally twisted by... Uh, by a little bit of jerbiness, which is coming from this uh, um, uh, 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 from these uh, characteristic classes of the circle bundles. Uh, 
So what you need to do is uh, uh, take the action of the circle on the centralizer of per element. Uh, 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 so the circle acts on the classifying stack of any group and on G mod G uh, um, by, uh, by the uh, element lambda I. And, uh, um, and uh, uh, the Lagrangian structure on the map from B of Z I to G mod G is S1 equivariant. So now you need to take that Lagrangian structure and twist it by the circle bundle given by alpha i. So that gives you a, a locally constant family of the classifying stacks of the group Zi over, uh, uh, um, uh, over uh, uh, Di. And it maps to a locally constant family of G mod Gs over Di. Uh, but because you have a connection uh, along the di direction, the, the standard Lagrangian structures, they just move along their horizontal. So you can go to global sections uh, and, and you get maps, uh, 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 which are sections over di in these uh, bundles of stacks, locally constant families of stacks. And you get sections all, uh, over the locally constant families of classifying stacks. And uh, and uh, um, once you uh, write down the restriction maps, uh, this gives you a Lagrangian guy, and you can intersect with that Lagrangian guy uh, and get uh, a, a symplectic leaf. Of course, you know uh, uh, you need to know that 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 moduli of alpha i twisted local. Uh, G local systems on on the circle bundle with alpha i twisted monodromy actually exist. So you need to know that that's not empty. So that's actually a condition on the alpha i and on the group G that you can write, but there are many cases in which you can prove it's not empty. And then you get the symplectic leaf, uh, get, the, get the Lagrangian, you can intersect with it, you get the symplectic leaf. So it's yeah, so this twisting is not visible in dimension two because there you have a point and there is no line bundle on the point that's non-trivial. But in higher dimensions, it's actually there because you can have non-trivial normal bundles. Um, but but it's essentially the same story. Uh, uh, if the divisor at infinity is smooth, then local fixing local monodromies around that divisor gives you a symplectic leaf. So I, I just said that intersecting gives you symplectic leaf. Too many letters, but okay. Um, yeah, so, so you get one of these generalized symplectic leaves by local monodromies at infinity. But what's more interesting is what's happening when the divisor at infinity is not smooth. Okay, so. Uh, here is what happens when you have two components, and that's the only case that we've analyzed carefully and written down the proofs. Um, I mean, it's clear that the same condition persists for any number of components, but we were just uh, lazy uh, and, and, and we didn't do it in general. So, um, so suppose that you have a compactification uh, uh, of Z, uh, the script Z, which, for which the boundary has two smooth irreducible components which meet transversally along some smooth submanifold of co-dimension two, which I'm calling D12. Now the boundary um, of, of the union of the two components, uh, it looks like you take a circle bundle, so you have two divisors, D1 and D2 and their intersection. Uh, so you take the circle bundle, which is the normal bundle, to the divisor D1, the circle bundle, which is a normal bundle to divisor D2, uh, uh, and the circle bundle, which is the torus bundle, uh, 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 the, 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 the boundary of the C star cross C star bundle on the intersection. Uh, and you glue the two along the two circles at the boundary inside the torus bundle. Um, so, uh, so you have one oriented circle bundle on the complement of D1, 2 in D1, another one on the complement of D1, 2 in D2, and you have another 
uh, a torus bundle on D1, too. And you can just uh, take the, the, the gluing of the two along the boundary. And, uh, um, and these guys have homotopy types of oriented compact manifolds of dimension 2n minus 1. And now the theorem is that for a commuting pair of elements, the map uh, uh, induced on module IF local systems from this map on the boundaries, on the gluing of the boundaries, is Lagrangian. And if the pair of local monodromes around the two components is strict, so that's that strange condition that we haven't seen before, then this stack is actually uh, 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 2 minus 2 and shift that's symplectic, uh, uh, um, which is equipped with, a, 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 and it's a generalized symplectic leaf in the Poisson structure. And in fact, I say if it's strict, it's uh, it's a it's a leaf. In fact, it's if and only if we just didn't write carefully the proof that the 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 it's a necessary condition as well. But it's clear that it's a necessary condition over a point. So, uh, uh. but so let me say what this strict thing is. Um, uh, so there is some condition on a pair of elements in a group uh, that guarantees that uh, the, lo the, 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 the local systems around the boundary, the, 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 the local systems on the circle bundles mapping to the local systems to the boundary are a Lagrangian guy. Uh, and it's a group theoretic condition on a pair of elements in the group. Um, so a pair of commuting elements in a group G is called strict if the map, so, so, so here is written in algebraic geometric language. Uh, so it's if the map uh, 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 from the classifying stack of the stabilizer of the pair to the product of uh, uh, the centralizer module itself for one of them, centralizer module itself on the other one over all commuting elements in the group is Lagrangian. So remember, Z1 mod Z1 is, is symplectic, is, is Lagrangian in, uh, uh, in, in the commuting elements. Z2 mod Z2 is Lagrangian in the commuting elements. So this intersection is, is symplectic, and you want this map to be Lagrangian for that symplectic structure. Uh, and it really, I mean, you know, I've written it in algebraic geometric terms, but it's really a condition on two elements in the group. So the, 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 there is a purely algebraic description of what that means. Uh, so here is some sufficient condition for, uh, uh, so here is a okay, sufficient and necessary condition for, for strictness, which is purely algebraic. So if you have a commuting pair of elements and you take the identity minus the adjoint action of one of them and the identity minus the adjoint action of the other one as endomorphisms of the Lie algebra, that the pair of group elements is strict if and only if one of those isomorphisms is strict with respect to the kernel of the other. So it says that the image of V restricted to the kernel of U is the same as the image of V intersected with the kernel of U. And it's a little bit strange that, you know, uh, the, the strictness the way I defined it originally was symmetric with respect to lambda one and lambda two or U and V. This condition is not, but in fact it is. So it can prove that if if one of them is strict with respect to the other, then the other way around, they're also strict. Um, uh, uh, and, um, and so th this is the algebraic property of strictness. It says that two elements in the group are strictness if these adjoint actions, uh, shifted adjoint actions are strict with respect to each other. Uh, and that guarantees that, that you have some Lagrangian guy and the local monodrome is give you a generalized symplectic leaf. So how do you find pairs like that? Uh, they are actually quite common. Uh, so here is, a, um, uh, here is a, 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 a typical way of producing them. Uh, if one of the elements is semi-simple, uh, then, uh, uh, then the pair is always strict doesn't matter what the other one is. Anything commuting with a semi-simple element gives you a strict pair. If you have a principal neopotent pair in the sense of Ginzburg, then the pair is six strict. Uh, so there is this uh, uh, principal neopotent pair uh, uh, notion of uh, Victor Ginzburg, which is kind of a subtle notion uh, 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 related to the structure of the Steinberg variety. And uh, 
being a principality of open pair forces strictness. Um, but strictness is not a vacuous condition. So uh, if you take a pair consisting of, uh, uh, of a non-trivial unipotent element repeated twice, uh, then it's not strict. So it's, a, it's an actual condition. And uh, so this, uh, this ends my story about the description of the symplectic leaves in the Betty case. And I already said what the results are in the Deram case, and I'm not going to talk more about it, and I'm going to stop here. So in the case for your surfaces, there's a very nice explicit formula for the symplectic form by like Goldman or Tia Bot or out of those. Is there any analog in the higher dimensional case, a way to just write down the shifted Poisson structure in terms of these? Well, it depends points. what you mean by a formula. So the, the, the point is that the shifted Poisson structure has this higher homotopic coherences in it, right? The actual pairing that it gives you on uh, uh, vector fields or on, I mean, for the Poisson structure on forms, uh, that's only the, the zeroth level of this homotopy coherent data. So the formula for the zeroth level is just the Poincare duality with coefficient in your point, in your representation. So it's exactly the same as the Goldman formula or, or the Lefschetz duality relative to the boundary. Uh, but that's only for the zeroth level. You, you do have these higher order terms, which you need to prove exists. Uh, so you could, in general, try to write formulas for them, but you'll need some extra data. I mean, you know, you need choices in order to write formulas for them. So you need something like uh, an ideal correct triangulation of the surface relative to the boundary or something like that. So there are actually attempts to do formulas like that. Uh, which mimic what people do in, in uh, digraph Witten theories in physics. Uh, but uh, uh, I haven't actually seen a formula that gives you all the terms. So is this an issue in the derived stack for just to sur just surfaces too, or does it only yes. come up in higher dimensions? Yes. Okay, gotcha, thank you. If G is GLN, can you say concretely exactly which pairs are strict? Um, other than saying, you know, they're strict. I mean, you, know, you could say it in the fundamental representation for JLN. It's again, you know, two elements uh, 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 which are, so take two matrices, separate their, uni, their, their uh, do the Cartan decomposition, separate them into semi-simple and newpotent, take the newpotent guys, you require that one of these newpotent matrices is strict with respect to the other. That's, that's the GLN condition. I have a much more elementary question. So, so, so for usual Poisson manifold, the simplicity leave is spanned by Hamiltonian vector field. It can can one also have an interpretation for these shifted ones? Mm. Or maybe maybe your how is your definition related to this? The the again, you know, the, the question is so if you think about the Poisson structure as being a Lagrangian structure to a map to something shifted symplectic right. to dimension one more, then you can talk about the um uh, uh you can talk about Hamiltonian vector fields as being poly vector fields on the source uh, uh, for that Lagrangian structure. Uh, and um, to what extent is that actually generating uh, the Poisson structure? It's kind of delicate because you're saying basically a, a, a Poisson structure is essentially a, 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 an infinitesimal shifted symplectic groupoid. Uh, and yeah, so that, that's part of this, uh, right. that's part of the converse, what I was saying, this, this theorem of, so yeah, if you, if, you, you, if you describe your Poisson structure in terms of the, of the Lagrangian, then yes, you know, it is. So the question is, can you reverse that? So that's this 
I, I actually mentioned this result, but I, didn't, I skipped over it. Uh, uh, result of uh, Rosenblum and Costello, um, which is kind of a partial inverse, which it's essentially uh, 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 about that. Uh, um, so, so it, it says that it is weakly equivalent to a space of Lagrangian maps, but then you need some, some uh, 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 infinitesimal equivalence relation between two Lagrangian maps. You need to say, uh, when do we identify two different Hamiltonian vector fields uh, under an isomorphism of these shifted Poisson structures? And so they have some, some, uh, uh, some, some category generated by these equivalence relations that actually tells you that, yes, it is true. Um, in, if the Poisson structure is just defined in the usual way, if, if you're defining it from a Lagrangian map, then, then it is there by definition. Sorry, I'm not sure if I... I'll try to understand. Okay. Um, maybe a naive question. So these two elements, lambda one, lambda g, they define Lagrangians in this um, yeah, local systems on a circle. So is the strictness condition some geometric condition on those Lagrangians? Or do you have some geometric interpretation? Um, no, it's it's about it's it, yeah, it's a condition about how local systems on two circles interact when you view them as local systems on the torus, right? And so that's the geometric interpretation. That was the actual definition of strictness. Uh, um, what was it? Uh, Uh, I mean, remember the, the actual definition of strictness uh, was this thing. And uh, yeah, so just saying that two spaces of local system on two different circles on the torus, when you view them as Lagrangians, as local systems on the torus, intersect uh, 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 in, in a way that you have an extra Lagrangian in that intersection. <clears throat> I, I wanna say that this has a flavor of, of Hamiltonian reduction. So there is this, um, uh, notion of a generalized Hamiltonian reduction when you uh, assemble many different reductions by uh, 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 gluing them uh, 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 along strata of some stratifying space. And this is what you actually need to do. I didn't talk about the, the, the wildly ramified case, but this is what you need to do if you're doing local systems with wild ramification. And you get very similar uh, conditions like that geometrically. Uh, um, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't say more than what I said. Um, okay, thank you. Anything online? No. Okay. No. Okay, lunch.